Hello, everybody. Welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm excited and I give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus for giving us another opportunity to be able to fellowship together and break the bread of life together. Now, you and I know that regularly on this channel, the bread of life we break is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, quick announcement. You know, by the grace of God, I pastor right now a mentorship fellowship and we we hold every two Sundays in a month at number 62 Oluagbebe Street off Shasha Road Ologofe bus stop Akonjo right here in Lagos amen so you may want to call you know uh, you will see our phone numbers later or the to text or send whatsapp and then we'll tell you the next fellowship date that we're having as a matter of fact this December you know we're going to be having our first ministers and believers thanksgiving because ministers also to do thanks amen <laughs> all right but if you have not followed me yet or started following me on uh, youtube tiktok uh, instagram you know or on facebook just type apostle victor james and you are there i'm telling you we have loads of teachings and that will be a blessing to both you your loved ones you know around you and they're all free amen so do that go to youtube tiktok instagram or facebook and just press the follow button all right i love you for doing that god bless you in jesus name for encouraging us amen all right <clears throat> the bread we're going to be breaking on this broadcast it's something very important as a matter of fact uh you may want to call it one of the lifelines or major lifelines concerning Christianity that God himself, you know, built Christianity around. The work, the finished work of Christ is built around it. And that is faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. Christianity is all about faith. As a matter of fact, the Bible said, uh, uh, you know, I didn't plan to use this, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to say it anyhow. In Romans chapter 1, in verse number 16 and 17, you know, concerning our life in Christ, our salvation, our Christianity, God wrapped faith around it. And that is, this is one of the subjects that is, I would like to say, most misunderstood, you know, in Christianity as a matter of fact. You know, and, and, and that's why Christianity is called the faith. Because you got to understand it. You must come to the knowledge of our faith. Are you seeing that? In Romans chapter, um, maybe you should put GNT translation, please. You know, <clears throat> in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, the Bible said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He said, I have complete confidence in the gospel. It is the power of, uh, uh, of God to save all who believe. Everyone who believe, first the Jews and also the Gentiles. Now go on, verse 17 now says, watch, verse 17 says, the, For the gospel reveals how God puts people right with himself. It is through faith. <clears throat> That's to tell you, you cannot come into Christianity, yeah, in the absence of faith. It's not possible. It's not possible. Through faith from beginning to the end. So Christianity is the product that, uh, you know, that God gave to humanity for the salvation of mankind. Yeah? Through faith or by faith. The Bible said from the beginning till the end. So how, did you, how do you start your Christianity? By faith. How do you maintain Christianity? You're the life of a Christian by faith. How do you go all the way to the end, so to speak, when Jesus comes for us all? By faith. So, Christianity in the absence of faith is not Christianity. And unfortunately, a lot of people are trying to dance around all kinds of activities, programs, you know, things, uh, 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 you know, in, in, in search of living a Christian, a true Christian life. Very unfortunate, very, very unfortunate, you know. 
You cannot live the life of a Christian or a Christian life or be a Christian in the first place in the absence of faith. It has to be by faith. God does not want anything from you. No sacrifice, no offering, no giving, no self-denial, self-affliction. Just a simple act of faith. All right? Now, I haven't said that because of time. I have so many things for us to share. So, I haven't said that. Um, the first point I want to say is this. Because I want to speak to, you know, Christians. Yeah? I want to speak to Christians. Uh, and then... Later on, towards the end of the broadcast, I might probably be addressing unbelievers as well. You know, those who are not Christians, that want to become Christians. But basically, I want to speak to you as a child of God, as a Christian. You know, because the devil, or let me not say the devil, because a lot of ministers ignorantly are selling religion, religious activities, in exchange for uh, through the true life of Christian or Christianity in Christ. And that life, like I said, or like, the, like we read in the Bible, it, it's not possible outside of faith. It's not. As a matter of fact, in the book of Galatians, the Holy Ghost speaking through Paul in Galatians chapter 2, he said, by the works of the flesh, through the activities of works, physical energy, self-punishment, denial, affliction, shall no one be justified, no flesh be justified in the sight of God. Because I'm, we're going to be seeing why faith. But before we get to why faith, look at this, first of all. Number one, there is no born again Christian without faith. So you couldn't tell anybody who is born again, who is a Christian, you don't have faith. That is, you know, Terrible a word to say. A word to say. It, 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 it's so wrong as the word wrong. You can't tell a Christian, anybody who is a born again Christian, that he or she does not have faith. I don't care under what circumstance. It doesn't matter whether the person act foolish, foolishly, or the person just ignorantly is dabbling into all kinds of errors and self-punishment and all of that. As long as the person is a born-again Christian, that person cannot be said not to have faith. Are you getting that? So, if you are a born-again Christian, the first thing I need you to know that the Holy Ghost wants me to let you know is that you have faith. Uh, let, let me just stop right there and then let's go into this. In Romans chapter 12, verse 3, NIV translation of Romans chapter 12, verse 3. The Bible said, For by the grace given unto me, I say unto every one of you. And now Paul is writing to believers in Rome, the church at Rome. These are Christians. He's right, Paul is writing to them. He said, For by the grace given unto me, I say to every one of you, you know, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, watch this, in accordance with the measure of the faith God has given to you. Bam. Can you see that? Paul is saying, look, that I know you guys are Christians. And I'm telling you, I'm testifying by the Spirit of God. As I'm writing to you, God has given to you the measure of faith. You have faith. Paul didn't say to them, look, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to because you don't have faith. You know, no, no. He said God has given to you faith. So think in line with what God has given to you. Think in proportion of what God has given to you. He has given you faith. You have faith. Glory be to God in heaven. You have faith. Thank you, precious Father. Now, I don't want to spend too much of that. Uh, because, remember, like I said, you couldn't be a Christian without having faith. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. He said, for by grace are you saved through faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. That's what the scripture says. Ephesians 2, 8. He said, for by grace you are saved. Through faith. Can you see that? So you couldn't be saved. You couldn't be born again. You couldn't be a child of God. You couldn't be a Christian. Unless you had faith. So 
that you are a born again Christian, it's a proof of your faith. Woo! Amande Dada. <laughs> Nobody needs to tell you you are a Christian. You, are, you will know you are born again Christian. The day you became born again. And then we're going to get into how you became born again. But just to get you to understand this. That you are a Christian. A born again Christian. You have faith. Don't ever doubt that. I need you. Look, <clears throat> regardless of how you feel, it doesn't matter. You have faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have faith. So the second point I want to you know, share is this. Your faith, the faith you have as a born-again Christian, it's not yours. It's not your faith. Are you seeing that? You, you don't have a faith that is your own. No. The faith you have is a gift of God to you. It's the faith of God. Oh, glory be to God. Both you and God have the same kind of faith. God has faith. It is the faith that God has that God has given to you. Are you seeing that? Woo! And do you know Jesus said with God, all things are possible. So if anything is possible for God, and that same anything is possible for you. Because the faith you have is the same faith. The same God kind of faith that God has. Watch this. Now, in the NIV translation of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews 12, 2. Now, this is where I begin to differ from, you know, a, a lot of faith preachers. This is where, you know, I, we come into a, a disagreement. You know, even though they are doing a great job. Faith preachers, kudos to you. You guys are doing a wonderful job. But this is where I begin to differ from faith preachers. You know, when somebody prays for healing, and then the faith preacher prays for everybody, and then some people come out to give testimony, and then somebody else is still sick, but he didn't come out because the sickness has not been, the Lord has not touched the person yet. And then the person is told, it's because you don't have faith. Or, your faith is small. You know, I differ. I bet to differ. Because there's no scripture for that. You know, and, and where they get such words or such things is from Jesus um, in, the, in the four Gospels. When Jesus said to them, Oh, ye of little faith. Or, you don't have faith. You know, remember, those people Jesus was physically speaking to while he was on the streets of Jerusalem as a Nazarite, those people were not born again. Jesus had not died yet. So, the faith of God is not what those people had. They had faith, but the faith they had was not the faith of God. It's, it, it, their faith is not the same as our faith. Are you getting that? You see, they, they had faith, but their faith had to be generated, self-generated by works of the flesh. So it was not a gift of faith that they had. It was not a faith that was given as a gift by God to them. <clears throat> Remember, ours was given to us as, a measure, as the measure, the measure of the gift of faith God gave to us. Praise God. At the point of our salvation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you understanding it now? All right. So, <clears throat> whether it was Moses, whether it was um, uh, um, Noah, whether it was Elijah, Elisha, Samson, David, you know, all of them put together. Everybody you can think of in the Old Testament before Jesus, before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. The majority of them had faith. But the faith they had yeah, was not the faith of God. Are you seeing that? It, 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 it was a faith based on <clears throat> their works. A faith based on what they could do. Faith based on their level of self-affliction, body 
denial. Are, are you seeing that? That was the faith they had. And so that kind of faith could not justify them, bring them into the life of God. <clears throat> that kind of faith couldn't bring them into the life of God because the Bible calls it the faith of the law. Watch. Let, let's, let, let's, let's hit the, let's read the ground. Uh, wait, before I read this Hebrews chapter 12, let's read chapter 11 first. The same NIV. In verse 39, Hebrews 11, verse 39. Now you know that the book of Hebrews chapter 11, as it's usually called, the hall of faith, you know, you know, the, the Old Testament saint. <clears throat> so everybody who lived by faith, who related with God by faith and all of that, they were all mentioned in Hebrews 11 from the very beginning to the end. All right. But in verse 39 of that same Hebrews 11, watch this. The Bible said, <clears throat> these were all commended for their faith. They all had faith. I'm telling you, Noah had faith. Enoch had faith. Elijah had faith. Had faith. David had faith. Samson had faith. Jacob had faith. Um, who else again? Uh, Rahab had faith. You know, everybody, all of them. Isaac had faith. All of them had faith. The Bible said they were all commended for their faith. But watch this. <clears throat> Yet none of them received what what had been promised. God said, truly, they had faith. All of them had, I mean, that was God's testimony. Through faith, they took kingdoms. They subdued kingdoms. They changed things. They took delivery of things. I mean, <laughs> they had their dead raised back to life under, under that Old Testament. Their activities. There were all kinds of activities that took place. Glorious things. Glorious testimonies. But God, so God commended their faith. That's what Hebrews 11 verse 39 says in NIV translation. He said, these were all commended for their faith. Yet, none of them received what had been promised. Abagadaya. Abagadaya. What was it that was promised? In Galatians chapter 3 verse 8, the King James Version. Let me show you what was promised. Aya! I love this. I love this. <clears throat> Watch this. They had faith, but their faith never took delivery of what was promised. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 8, the Bible said, And the scripture, foreseeing that God will justify the hidden through faith, the scripture, <laughs> you know, what that means is that God had always planned, he had always concluded that salvation, deliverance, the blessedness of the gift of the life and the presence of God and eternal life will be on the basis of simple act of faith. And that kind of faith is not going to be premised on the works of any man. Lest the man will boast. Lest the man have a reason to glory before God. So God said, look, look. The hidden salvation, mankind will be saved. Salvation will come. Healing will come. The life of God, eternal life. Everything God will come, will be given to man by faith. Minus man's effort, work. Minus man's effort. His work will not be involved. I am going to have to give him faith. My own faith. My own faith, God's own faith. It's not, does not make room. For any self-glorification. Are you seeing that? So the Bible said for the scripture. For seeing that God will justify. The word justify means acquit. Which is salvation. The hidden through faith. Are you seeing it? Salvation will come through faith. But this faith is not the faith that was exercised under the law. It's going to be a brand new faith. It's going to be a faith that is the faith of God. It's different from the faith Moses operated. Different from the faith Noah operated. Different from the faith 
inoperative, different from the faith uh, uh, um, Elijah, Moses, uh, uh, David, Solomon, all of them, all the way to uh, uh, John the Baptist. The faith they operated, this faith that God is talking about is different. Well, somebody say, AVG, how do you know that? Very simple. Remember, we read in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39, the NIV translation. It says, <clears throat> God commended their faith. God testified that their faith actually was, you know, got results. But the actual promise, what God promised, one single promise that everybody must enter into, which is salvation, their faith could not bring them into it. Hey, bad, bad, That's why Abraham believed God. His believing God was counted. It was counted for Abraham for righteousness. He was not made righteous. Abraham was not made righteous. It was banked. Abraham's faith in God. God banked his faith in him. You know, Abraham did everything to show that he had, he believed God. So God banked, credited. That is faith, act of faith, work of faith. God banked it because that faith was not the faith of God. So God banked it, credited it to him. That at the right time, when the God faith is given, and man begins to enter into the promise, which is the salvation that God promised. Woo, hallelujah. Then every one of them, their faith that was the reason God accredited righteousness to them, he will now make them righteous. That's why, as for us in the New Testament in Christ Jesus, when we believed in Jesus Christ, God did not count it for righteousness for us. He didn't bank it. No. The Bible said we were made the righteousness of God. Amen. There are two different things. Abraham believed God. It was counted, accredited, banked for him. He had not become righteous. That's why Abraham couldn't go into heaven. None of them went into heaven. Are you seeing that? Enoch didn't go into heaven. You know, I, I remember I put something on uh, uh, on social media that Enoch, when God took him, he did not enter into heaven. Some Christians, some bishops, some pastors came after me. They were so angry. Blah, 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 blah. They said, Apostle, you are talking nonsense. God took him to heaven. And Elijah, God took Elijah to heaven. I said, what are you talking about? Enoch was a man. <clears throat> he was a man. He had not, his sins had not been paid for. Ayah. Don't you get it? From Adam, everybody was made sin. Not because we committed sin. No, it is the sin that Adam committed that passed down to everybody, including Enoch. But in, in those days, there were men who paid a sacrificial fleshly price of faith with God. So that price, God counted it, banked it for them, accredited it to their account. That when righteousness is now given, they too, we're coming. But as at that time, they were not made righteous. Because if Enoch, <clears throat> excuse me, if Enoch had entered heaven as at that time, then Enoch would be senior to the Lord Jesus. If Elijah, with that chariot that took him, went into heaven, Elijah would be senior to the Lord Jesus. But God forbid. God forbid. Who is Enoch? Who is, in, who is Elijah? The Bible said in Colossians that in all things that Jesus may have preeminence. Glory be to God. I love to speak about Jesus. <laughs> in everything, in all things, Jesus must have the preeminence because Jesus is God's agenda for everything. Are you seeing that? So as a man, the first person to go from the earth into heaven as a man is Jesus Christ. So where did Enoch go? Where did Elijah go. Very simple. They went into a place called paradise. You see, but Enoch was not God's agenda to preach the gospel to. It was Abraham. That's why paradise became called Abraham's bosom. Remember, 
God preached the gospel of what was going to happen through Jesus Christ to Abraham. But Abraham thought God was talking to him and his children. No, God said not to his children. It was to Christ. One seed. Are you seeing that? So as God was explaining these things to Abraham, Abraham didn't get it. God just chose Abraham. He didn't choose Enoch to preach it to Enoch. He didn't choose Elijah to preach it to Elijah. No, nobody. He just chose Abraham. Are you getting it? All right. Because I don't want to, I don't want to lose you. This is very, this is very vital. So, both Enoch, Adam, Elijah, Abraham, everybody went into paradise awaiting the Christ. The one that the Father has appointed. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So when Jesus came, he that knew no sin, whoo, but was made sin, that we, as we believe in what God did through him, might be made the righteousness of God. A complete and total substitution. So when Jesus resurrected, he became the first fruit to be raised. Woo, hallelujah. Don't you get it? So the Bible said in the book of John, <laughs> you know why I'm laughing? These things are there, they are in the Bible. It's just because of time, you know. These things are there, they are in the Bible. So when Jesus resurrected, the Bible said, after Jesus resurrected, then the Old Testament saints, their grave opened up and they rose from the dead. They didn't resurrect with Jesus. They resurrected after Jesus resurrected. Are you seeing that? But notice, when the Bible was talking about you and I, Christians, born again Christians, in Ephesians chapter 2, we did not resurrect after Jesus resurrected. We resurrected with Christ. Because we were in him. But Abraham, Enoch, Elijah, Moses, everybody, they were not in him. They were already in paradise. Waiting. Woo! We'll look into that another day. Let's, so, so that we don't lose track of this. So, what faith do we have? In Hebrews chapter 12, verse, verse 2, the NIV translation that we say we're going to look at. Watch this. Hebrews 12, 2. The Bible said, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. That's what I'm reading. NIV translation. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Why? He says, he is the author and perfecter of our faith. Are you seeing that? Woo, glory be to God in heaven. Jesus is the author. The faith we have, Jesus is the pioneer of that faith. Of this, our own faith. Jesus was not the pioneer of the faith of Moses. The faith Moses operated. The faith Elijah operated. The faith David operated. The faith all of them, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Zechariah, Zephaniah, all of them. No, uh, you know, including Noah. The faith they operated was not pioneered by Jesus. But our own faith was pioneered, authored by the Lord Jesus Christ. Because this is the faith of God that God gave to us. Who are you? Are you getting this thing? That's why their own faith, God commended their faith. But with their faith, they could not enter into the promise. But with our own faith, the faith of God that God gave us, as soon as He gave it to us, we will enter into the promise. We started our journey from the promise. Woo, hallelujah. Israel came out of Egypt to go to the promised land. We, we came out of the world to, and started at the promised land. Thank you, precious father. Because of the kind of faith that we have. <laughs> Are you seeing that? Very powerful faith. Our faith is tremendous. Very powerful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Watch this. Let me load you with some more. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 22, um, um, NIV translation of Galatians chapter 3 verse 22. Watch this. The Bible says, but the scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin. It says, so that what was promised, which is salvation, what was promised, the salvation of the soul, the life of mankind, the deliverance of mankind from the clutches of the, uh, of the powers of hell, you know, and being translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. The Bible said, 
is so that the promise, uh, uh, so that what was promised, which is salvation, being given through faith in Christ, might be given to those who believe. Woo! Hallelujah. So this faith, that is the faith of God, that you and I have, that Jesus is the pioneer of. The Bible calls it in King James, the auto and finisher. In the NIV translation, it said the pioneer and the perfecter or perfecter woo, of our faith. So, <laughs> God punish the devil. This is why the devil is jealous of you. Because what God has is what God gave you and I. And so, whatever can be possible for God can be possible for you and I. You see, so we have left the realm of man, of men. We have entered into the realm of the Godhead. We are, you and I have literally come into the, the realm of the Godhead. Now, watch this. <laughs> oh, Gavadayada. Do, do you know when they took Shidrach, Meshach, and Abednego and threw them inside the fire? The Bible said King Nebuchadnezzar, when he looked, instead of seeing three guys inside, he saw four. And Nebuchadnezzar said with his own mouth, publicly, he said, but I see four inside the furnace of fire. He said, and the fourth guy among them looked like the son of man. Woo! So the Godhead is no more trinity. The Godhead is now fornity. <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory be to God. Are you seeing that? Even Nebuchadnezzar, he saw the new creation. Because the fourth man represented the new creation in Christ Jesus. He's a member of the Godhead. You and I, by faith in Christ Jesus, we've been brought to the class of the Godhead. Hallelujah. That's why we have the life of God. The life of God is in me. I can't fail. I cannot die before my time. I will live to fulfill the plan of God for my life. You need to say with your mouth, I have the faith of God. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. The devil is a liar. My life is not in the hand of the devil. The powers of the wicked one are shattered over me. Sickness cannot survive my body because my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare that I have life. Eternal life inside of me. Glory be to God. I have eternal life in me. I am blessed. It is written that I am blessed. Therefore, I declare, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Glory be to God in heaven. Hallelujah. Woo! Oh God, time is going. I got to run. I have so much thing to say here. Your faith is not small. That's the next thing I want to look at. Your faith is not a small faith. No born again Christian has a small faith. Whether you are living in doubt, fear, or unbelief, it doesn't matter. As long as you are a born again Christian, the faith you have is not a small faith faith. It's not an insignificant faith. So watch this. Remember, the Bible said we are given, according to Romans chapter 12 verse 3, the measure of faith. So there, there's nobody that will come and say God gave him a greater faith than me or God gave me a greater faith than you. Look, let me tell you, at the point of salvation, you, you see, uh, when you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel. You know, somebody came. Of course, all of us got born again by hearing the gospel. You know, about what God used Jesus to do for us. You know, oh, Jesus loves you. God gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. As we're hearing it, and you became convinced by believing what you were hearing about Jesus Christ. That God used him to do for us. Are you seeing that? That period, that moment, where you choose to believe what you were hearing about Jesus Christ, God gave you his faith. Are you, get, are you seeing the point where you receive, where you were given the faith of God? Because without the faith of God, you could not be born again. And someone say, uh, does that mean uh, all the people in the Old Testament, by faith, they couldn't have been born again? They couldn't have been born again. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If David was here now, he couldn't have been born again. He has to do away with that his faith. Enoch will do away with that his faith. Elijah will do away with that his faith. Noah will do away with that his faith. Moses will do away with that his faith. 
and await to be given the faith of God for him or for them to enter salvation. Remember, Jesus in John chapter 1 said he came to his own and his own received him not. Are you seeing that? They had faith. Israel, they had faith in Israel. They had faith in the God of Moses. They had faith in Moses. They had faith in Elijah. They had faith in the prophet, in Isaiah. You see, but their faith right now in Israel, this physical 2000, uh, 2000 and something, you know, Israel still do not have faith in Jesus. So verse 12 now says, but as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. To as many as believe, once you believe in Jesus Christ, God gives you faith to exercise in Jesus. And that brings you into the salvation that is in Christ. Are you seeing it? That's why their own faith in the Old Testament could not bring them into the promise, into that salvation. So, don't live your life trying to copy Old Testament people. No. Live your life copying Jesus. The pattern of the faith of God that we have in Christ Jesus in the epistles. Are you seeing that? When Jesus was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, he didn't start praise and worship. Oh Lord, you are so good. Oh my God, you are so kind. God said, what do you want? I'm trying to raise Lazarus from the dead. No, when Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus, he said, roll the stone away. The Bible said the one that started laughing, making mockery of Jesus. He didn't pay them no attention. You see, because the faith of God was at work in Jesus. He didn't have to do nothing to qualify to raise Lazarus from the dead. He said, Father, even that I'm talking to you now, I shouldn't even be doing it, but I'm doing it for their sake. You know, for them to know, because they don't understand. He said, because I know you hear me always. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come forth. He that was dead for four days busted out of the grave. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So now that you have been given this faith and you actually access, you have actually exercised it in Jesus Christ, you came out on the other side, a child of God. A born again Christian. The greatest miracle. That is the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle that can happen to anybody. Is for the person to use the faith God gave the person. In Jesus. And then the person becomes a born again Christian. Wow. A dead spirit. Comes back to life. There is no miracle as great as that. Now. If you, the faith God gave you. Can help you to achieve, to receive, to take the greatest miracle. How dare you allow somebody or anybody tell you that you have small faith? How? Right now, what you have is eternal life. The life and the nature of God is in you by the gift of the faith of God that you have received. How can you let somebody tell you your faith is small? You don't have small faith. You don't have small faith. So none of us is superior to the other when it comes to faith in Christ Jesus. When it comes to faith in Jesus, I am not superior to you. You are not superior to me. I know what you are thinking now. And this other man, he has a big church. They are up to 100,000. You, your own church is just about like 100 people. Let me tell you. It does not mean he has a better or superior faith than you. Two things are at play. Stay where God wants you. And do what he has committed to you to do. Number two. All you have to do is to learn to exercise to use your faith. You have it already. Learn to exercise yourself to use it. You have to learn to exercise your faith to use it. Anyway, I'm still coming to that, but before I get to that point, because of time, so let me just rush through this first. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, GNT translation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, 
the GNT translation. Look at what the Bible says. No, not NIV. Yeah. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible said, Who made you superior to others? Now, this is Paul, by the Spirit of God, writing to the church at Corinth, to the saints at Corinth. Because all you have to do is go to chapter 1 from verse 1. You will see that he was writing to the saints. He said, Who made you superior to others? Why do you think you are superior? Don't let anybody make, make you feel inferior. He said, didn't God give you everything you have, including your faith? Including your faith. God gave you your faith. Don't let anybody try to mystify God to you. Or God's walking. Say, so, you know, I was hearing one of these young preachers on social media. You know, you know. I thank God for their zeal. It's just that as they grow, they will mature. You know, they will mature. It's all right. You know, most of these young preachers, when you hear them preaching now on social media, they begin to try to mystify God. You need to pray until you get to a realm. When you get to a realm, you now begin to X Y Z things will begin to you know oh blah 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 blah. Oh gosh, utter nonsense. Which realm? Look, when you got born again, I mean, as you are hearing the gospel, God gave you faith, and you exercise that faith in Jesus. Immediately, you were made to be seated with Christ Jesus at the right hand of majesty. That is the highest realm. No realm that is higher than that. These guys don't understand what they are talking about. They are just trying to bring in their flesh. Say, I, I remember when I went to the mountain. I prayed for 48 days. I until I ascended some things. I you know, I and they try to glorify themselves. They try to glorify self. In, you know, and in doing that, you know, try to show superiority over the the body of Christ, the other members of the body of Christ. These people are ignorant. They don't know what they are talking about. They just have zeal. They are so excited. Youthful, exuberant. That's all I see. The day you got born again, just by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, by exercising the faith God gave you for hearing the gospel and believing in the gospel, in Jesus Christ, immediately, you became a member of the body of Christ and God helped you to ascend you ascended and were, you were made to be seated together with Christ in the heavenly realm. Heavenly, there, is no high, there, there is no other realm. There is no other higher realm you need to come into. Don't you understand? Jesus is seated at the right hand of majesty. That is the highest level. Far above all heavens. Far above all heavens. And that is where you and I are seated together with Christ. From the moment... We exercise our faith in Jesus. So don't let anybody... Look, if you don't become careful at the kind of preachings you listen to on social media, there are these young preachers, you know, that just want to show that um, things are happening for them. They are making money now. You know, they are, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they start preaching mystic, mystical things about God. You, you know, uh, they, they start telling you, uh, you have to pray by 12 midnight because that's when so, 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 so and then by 2 a.m. or You know, that's when all the activities of whatever, whatever, and then by 3 a.m. and then by 6 a.m. Look at ungodliness. These people have not read the Bible. In Galatians chapter 4, in verse 9 and 10, Paul was writing to the church. He said to them, he said, please, 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 please. You Christians, you born again believers, you that have exercised faith in Christ Jesus and have ascended higher than all these things. He said, but now, after that you have known God, or rather, known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements where unto you desire to be in bondage? Don't let anybody put you in bondage. You have escaped it already. You have already. Glory be to God. In verse 10, he said, you observe days, you observe months, and you observe times and years what verse 11 now says look at verse 11 this is, i mean paul was pouring out his heart to this christian he said i'm afraid of you lest i have bestowed labor on you in vain i hope my pastoring you my teaching you all these years it has not been in vain what are you doing who told you until you pray by 12 3 or 6 a.m 
before whatever, whatever. What are you talking about? Jesus ascended, oh, hallelujah, far above all heavens. There is nothing, oh, abandoned. Ephesians 4 says he filled all in all. He feel it. Jesus feels all things. There is no way the authority of Jesus does not extend into. So whether it is 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 12 a.m., or whatever time, when you begin to shanda, egata, egula, dangeto, laya, you need to keep doing that by faith. Exercise this God given faith that He has given to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ambata, gelo toto. Is that He that speaketh in an unknown tongue? Speaketh not unto man, but unto God. How be it in the spirit? He is discussing mysteries because the devil and the works of darkness are cut off. They are cut off. They are severed. They are they are perpetually taken out of it and then discussion is going on between you and almighty God as a member of the Godhead seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly place when Paul I mean when Peter, James and John were to enter into the temple they've been going in there for years and suddenly they notice this guy at the gate called beautiful lame paralyzed, waist down. And the man was begging there for arms. Peter turned to him. He said, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have. Hallelujah. Such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Peter grabbed him and said, rise up and walk. And the Bible said immediately as Peter grabbed him. Because at first the man didn't believe him. He didn't want to get up. Peter grabbed him and yanked him up. He said immediately, his ankle bones received strength. Glory be to God. When later the apostles were now arrested and demanded to explain what happened. Peter said, why are you people looking at us as though by our power we did it? He said, we didn't do nothing. Faith in the name of Jesus made this man whole. Hallelujah. Your faith is not small, Lou. You are the one that thinks it's small. Your faith is not small. The same faith that God, through Christ Jesus, gave me. He gave you. He gave Peter. He gave John. He gave Paul. But Peter said, I simply use that faith the way I use it in Jesus for my salvation. I used it again in Jesus for this man's healing. Woo! Hallelujah. It's time to live by faith. For the just shall live by faith. You can't go wrong by faith. Because this faith is not your own. Don't worry about whether it will not work. No, 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 no. Don't worry. Uh, uh, let's communicate that from you. It is the faith of God. It must work. It must work. Your faith will work. Your faith must work. God punish the devil. I take authority over that sickness right now. Whatever the sickness is. By faith in the name of Jesus. I kill that sickness. I command it to die in the name of Jesus. Every demonic influence and hold. Over whatever it is that has to do with us. I break their powers. I break their influence in the name of Jesus. By faith I declare freedom right now. In the name of Jesus. I declare freedom right now. Enough of suffering, enough of disappointment, enough of delay. Whatever was delayed be beyond three weeks concerning you, anywhere you are, at the sound of my voice, I command resurrection to happen to it. In the name of Jesus. Ooh, glory be to God. I got to run because of time. I got to run. So, please, your faith is not small. Go back to that uh, First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, GNT translation. Let me finish it for you. He says, who made you superior to others? Didn't God give you everything you have, including faith? He said, well then, how can you boast if what you have when... <laughs> as, I mean, how can you boast? As if what you have were not a gift. It's a gift. God gave you gift of faith. Nobody is superior to you when it comes to faith. Nobody is bigger than you when it comes to faith. Nobody is better than you when it comes to faith. Are you seeing what I'm saying? You see, the knowledge about faith is something, is another topic. And how to use your faith is another topic. You see, but what I need you to understand is that you have faith. And it is not a small faith. Finally, I'd like to look at something else. Number four. Your faith is a victorious faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, this faith that God gave us, 
there is a victorious faith. Anything it comes in contact with, it overcomes it. Woo! Anything, I mean anything, it comes in. He said in First John chapter 5, in verse number 4, <laughs> First John chapter 5, verse number 4, in the King James translation. <laughs> he said, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. I like to say it like this. Even our God-given faith. He said, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our God-given faith. The faith we have. Look, the only time, the only reason... The devil can perpetually keep messing with you. It's you leaving your faith dormant. The faith God gave us is a victorious faith. Any condition it comes in contact with, it must overcome. No, no, no. You don't have to pray about it. It just must overcome. It's by nature an overcoming faith. Can you just make up your mind that from tonight, as I sleep, no devil will molest my body. In the name of Jesus, no devil will molest my body again. You will see that the, the devil will just excuse you. He will just excuse you in that area. Because he knows that in that area, you have woken up by faith. The, the faith God gave us that we have, woo, that is our faith now, is a victorious faith, an overcoming faith. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. That faith does not need prayer help. I'm not saying you shouldn't pray. Uh, that's why I talked about praying, speaking in tongues or praying in tongues. I didn't say you shouldn't pray. But I'm talking about this faith that God gave us. It is, it is by nature an overcoming faith. Whatever condition, situation, circumstance it comes in contact with, you overcome. Oh, hallelujah. Can I help you by the word of the Lord to change your mind, to just exercise yourself? You will see that your body structures will readjust. That pregnancy will take place. I bind the devil in the name of Jesus. Whatever spirit that has vowed that you will not be pregnant, by faith now, if I can get you to just switch, it doesn't matter what the condition is, what the doctor said. If I can get you to just switch, Yea, if I can, I let here do karatalia. The Bible said Abraham believed against the deadness of Sarah's body. He believed. He chose to believe. Abogate ya ngretosa. He chose to against the deadness of Sarah's body. Abora daya, ekula daya, ngreto, zebre de agata. Even though they are going to throw me in the lion's den, I believe that God will not allow the lion to eat me. That was Daniel's faith. That faith, God energized it, and the lions became mattress for him. Woo! I'm telling you, virtue has gone out of my body right now. There's power that has come out of my body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I take authority over every devil. Every work of the devil. He said for this purpose the son of God was manifest. To undo the works of the devil. So whatever the devil has done. I command it undone. In the name of Jesus. I put a stop to his activities. I put a stop to the molestations of the devil. You foul unclean spirit. I rebuke you. You are bound in Jesus name. And I cast you out. I command you to go into the Atlantic Ocean. And never to return back to that person. To that man, that woman, that boy, that girl. To anybody under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus. I bless your little effort to become magnified. To become great. Whatever it is that is a news you need to hear. Under this unction and this atmosphere. I command by faith in the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive that news now. Let it be quickened. He said God will do a quick work. And he will cut it short. In righteousness. Therefore I command. In the name of Jesus. By faith. Let your good news be quick. Come quickly. In the name of Jesus. I come. I quicken your good news. To come quickly. I dispatch angels. Father. I ask that your angels go. On the behalf of everybody. Under the sound of my voice. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And cause that the line fall into you. Unto you. In pleasant places. He said God will give grace and glory. And nothing good will he withhold. I am the teko. Whatever I want to withhold anything good from you, I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus and I cut off your hand. I release you into your own place. 
your own wealthy place in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name. Oh my God, let me. Oh, time, Jesus. My time is fast spent. But I got to show you this because it's, it's, it's going to do you good, all right? It's going to do you good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! It's not only an overcoming faith, this faith, it's not only an overcoming faith. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a faith that makes good everything that you desire. It will make it good. God will honor it for good. God honors it for good. In Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said, the Bible said, Jesus, Jesus said unto that man, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. This faith also is the faith that keeps the devil off your territory. If you want, the, the reason God gave us this faith is that with this faith, the devil will constantly be kept off our territory. The devil is afraid of every believer. Look, let me tell you. The devil is afraid. He doesn't, he's not sure whether it will attack you or not. He is not sure. Once you are a born-again Christian, you become a light. He knows that God has given you what is of God, the nature of God, faith, the gift of faith. So the devil is very careful with you. You know why? He is not permitted to act in faith. The devil does, is not permitted to act in faith. Anytime the devil wants to act in faith, it becomes a torment to him. That's what the Bible said in the book of James in 4. He said, even the devil believes and he trembles. We will believe, we rejoice. We became born again. Life is transferred into us. We are healed. But the devil, every time he believes, it becomes a torment for him. So faith is what God gave us to keep the devil off our territory. Because the devil and faith can't mix. God refused, as eternally refused, the devil, to permit the devil to come into faith. Because if the devil can have faith, then he himself, he himself we access Jesus and become saved. So to block the devil from being saved, God made sure anything that has to do with the life of God will be by faith. So faith is a torment to the devil. So anytime you choose not to doubt, not to fear, not to be worried, to believe, the devil is made to leave your territory. Whatever it is he was dancing around concerning you, he will leave it immediately. <laughs> in 1 John chapter 5, the Bible said in verse 8 and 9, first, I mean 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Look at, see Bible. Oh Jesus, see Bible now. Look at it. He said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, our enemy, the devil, the devil is our enemy. He said, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he devour. He doesn't, he's not even sure who to attack. He's not looking for somebody. And how the devil knows who to attack? How? The Bible says, let not a double-minded man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. When you start doubting, you are in fear, in unbelief. That's when the devil knows he should attack you. Change your mind. The faith God gave you is a territory the devil cannot enter into. He will be consumed. Hallelujah. In verse 9, he now says, that same devil you, whom we resist steadfast in the faith. Regardless of your circumstance and challenges, keep in faith. That's why if anything, if there is there anything the devil is after, it's your faith. He wants to cripple your faith. He wants you to just doubt, to just decide that you will not live by faith. Then he will rejoice and come around and perpetuate his evil. He said, beloved, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Knowing this, you have to have a knowing, a knowledge, a knowing that the trial of your faith is not the trial of your name. You don't need to change your name. It doesn't matter whether they call you Ogun or Shakmono. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether they call you Mr. Madioha. It doesn't matter. The trial of your faith, not the trial of your name. The trial of your faith. Not the trial of your circumstance or your situation or your condition. The trial of your faith. Knowing this, that the trial of your faith worketh patience. And let patience have a perfect work. Whom we resist steadfast in the faith. 
Woo, hallelujah. Help me, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Your faith keeps the devil off your territory. It doesn't matter how stubborn the devil is. Once or once he sees faith, the devil takes off. But let me say this to you. Even if you have doubted before this teaching, before this broadcast, even if you have heard news about yourself, your family, you know, your husband, your wife, your children, your business, you know, whatever it is, maybe because you now doubted, you know, the devil is now rejoicing. Things are not working the way it's supposed to, you know, things are slowed down. That's why the Holy Ghost sent me across to you. Let's say you have, you have been living in doubt, in fear. You know, you are even saying, Lord, I don't even know whether Jesus is real. All the things he promised me, where are they? What is it? You know, all this, follow Jesus, follow Jesus. I don't, even, I don't even understand anymore. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What I'm here to tell you is that it doesn't matter. You can still come back into faith. Once you bounce back into faith, according to what you are hearing now, that same devil will still run. Ephesians chapter 6 says, in verse 16, the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Look at the Bible. <laughs> NLT translation. Put an NLT translation for me. God punish the devil. NLT translation. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. He says, in addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop. You can stop him. Even though the devil has been dancing around your family compound because you are, you know, you've been doing the wrong thing since, you know, you, you have not been living right. The Bible said the, the just shall live by faith. You have not been living right. You know, you have not been living by faith. You are doubting, fear, anxiety. You are worried, you know, school fees, house rent, all that, you know, just came at the same time. The nation's economy is going down. And right now, you know, everything is just weighing you down. You know, to even pray self is very difficult. You know, the Holy Ghost sent me to you to fire your faith again. So, that devil dancing around your territory, dancing around your territory. The Bible said, in addition to all those doubt, all those tears, all those fears, hold faith. Hold the shield of faith again. Pick it up again. Pick up your faith. God punish the devil. He said, with that faith, you will stop the fairy arrows of the devil. Whatever it is he has shot, you will stop it. Whatever sickness in your body that has been, you know, doing, I command it to stop. By faith in the name of Jesus, it stops. Whatever the devil has been, you know, sitting down on, frustrating, you know, making mockery of, stop now because faith is back. We bounce back in faith in the name of Jesus. I command that devil, get out in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name. Woo, hallelujah. It is with faith you are able to stop the devil. You can tell him, Satan, it's enough. It's enough. All these cars breaking down is enough. All this light going off is enough. No gas in the house. No house rent. It's enough. No, uh, you know, money for school fees. It's, stop, Satan, stop. I, I command you to stop. By faith in the name of Jesus. He said, once the devil know you are back in faith, he will pack his things and leave. Whom we resist steadfast in the faith. Glory be to God. And the Bible said, and they will flee from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh. In Mark eleven twenty three, Mark eleven twenty three. look at what Jesus said. This is where I stop. Finally, the faith God gave to us works by speaking. Don't be quiet. You got to talk. Put it in King James. Mark eleven twenty three. For verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, whosoever shall say to this mountain, mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. I want to give you like 60 seconds. Say something. Because this faith has been stirred up right now. I need you to say something. 
Open your mouth. Say something. Wherever you are. The Bible said in Romans and chapter number number 10. In verse 5 and 6. Romans 10. Verse 5 and 6. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law. That the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But in verse 6. But the righteousness which is of God. Speak it. Speak it. Romans chapter 10. Abaron de teki abada. Verse 6. Verse 6. Romans 10, 6. Abola daya. This is where I close this thing. Because now the atmosphere is charged. Glory be to God. He said, but the righteousness which is of faith. Speak it. Speak it. He doesn't keep quiet. He speak it. Jesus said, whosoever shall say to this mountain. Mountain. Be thou removed. And shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He said he shall have what so what things soever he says. Father, I say that I am blessed. There is peace in my family. My family is heavily protected. We are financially secured. No sickness is invading my body or my family. He said that he that raised Christ from the dead shall revitalize my mortal body. My body is revitalized. I have sound mind. My children have sound mind. There is a great door open to us that the powers of darkness cannot close. Glory be to God. We are blessed and we cannot be cursed. Therefore, we have come under the shield of the workings of the Holy Ghost. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I declare that I am blessed. It is well with my soul. It is well with my body. It is well with everything I touch. Everything I touch is blessed. My ministry is blessed. I am reaching millions of millions of millions all over the world with the gospel of Christ. And understanding is happening to my audience. My audience are blessed with understanding. My audience are blessed with understanding. Every word that I have spoken against myself, against my family, against my work, the work of my hand, against my ministry, whether knowingly or unknowingly, whether deliberately or, or, or otherwise, I reverse those words. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every negative spirit, every evil spirit that want to take advantage of those words. I bind you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I withdraw your ability because Jesus through his death on the cross disarmed you. Therefore in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the cross I command you disarmed. In the name of Jesus, you unclean spirit, you wicked devils, you wicked spirit, I command you disarmed. You are disarmed in the name of Jesus. You are disarmed in the name of Ayete Ezukabara Takusata Esukradengre Tekosa Yakele Tokaratura E Paradiandere Tokosabaya Ezubre de Kia Grada Katokara Endre de Yadabasha Taraya Esuaga. I have no fear in me. I am bold. I am bold with boldness, Father. I speak forth in the name of Jesus. I command that good things are waking up for my sake. Good things are waking up for my sake. Good things are waking up. Oh, yes. Thank you, precious Father. I give you the glory. Thank you, Father. I believe it. I've spoken it. And they are so. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, precious Father. You know, we will not end our broadcast without giving you opportunity to be a financial blessing to us. We need you to help us. Join us financially so as to be able to push this gospel and spread it all over. Now, if this teaching has been a blessing to you, I want you to do two things for me. Share it. Press the share button. Share it. Send it to as many people as you can. Let's help our brethren all over the world. Because Jesus is going to ask us to give account that we know the truth and we didn't share it. So let's share it so as to help somebody. Amen. Glory be to God. Then secondly, I want to ask you to help us. We need your money. I mean, we need your finance. I'm not going to play around. You know, the Bible says when a man in Galatians chapter 6 has blessed you with the word, he said you should minister your substance, including your finance to him. And, you know, um, broadcast like this, the cost money. You know, so I'm going to ask you to give right now. Don't say, well, AVJ is not talking to me. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Wherever you are all over the world, whether you are in America, Canada, in China, Japan, or you are in uh, 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 Europe, or you are in UK, in the United Kingdom, you know, or, or, or specifically you are in Dubai, Qatar, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Iran, you know, Turkey, wherever you are, in South Africa, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Ghana, all over the world, Algeria, 
you know, Egypt, wherever you are hearing this broadcast, if it has been a blessing to you, I'm going to ask you to help and to give financially in the name of Jesus. Now you will see our uh, giving platform. You know, we're going to put it on, our, on right there so that you can be a blessing to us as well. All right? You know, but don't be under pressure. Give by faith. For God loves a cheerful giver. Father, thank you for everyone that is giving. Bless and multiply every seed so in the precious name of Jesus. So our account number is GT Bank, Guaranteed Trust Bank, in Naira, in Nigeria, 001-686-4121. And then the second one is Access Bank, Access Bank, in Nigeria, 1433373. 574. So wherever you are, you can be a part of it and let the Lord use you. God bless you until I see you on the next broadcast. This is AVJ, Apostle Victor James. Guess what I'm about to do? I am signing out. God bless you. Bye-bye.